Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on hybrid classroom, just for an emergency or for a new learning approach. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, and Lenovo. My name is Ivana Kovac, and I'm the STEM Alliance coordinator at European Schoolnet based in Brussels, and it's my great pleasure to be your host today. Before introducing our speakers today, let me go over a few housekeeping rules. This webinar will finish at 6 p.m., and it is being recorded. It will be published on the STEM Alliance platform for you to be able to rewatch at your convenience. Please note that your camera and microphone have been disabled. My colleague Rocio is also with us today, and she will help you with any technical issues that may arise. If needed, please reach out to her in the chat window. Rocio is also sharing a link to signatures list in the chat. Please sign this list as this is really a mandatory document if you wish to receive the certificate of participation for this event. Please note that only those who have signed the list will receive the certificate. Finally, our speakers will be answering your questions throughout the event, so please post your questions in the chat and we will relay them to our speakers later. And now let me tell you something about our speakers and introduce them. Lenovo believes that education is the foundation of a better future. Lenovo is committed to STEM education and delivers solutions designed to enable safe and accessible learning for all. They empower teachers and learners with secure, manageable devices and engaging content to spark imagination and discovery in any learning environment. And now let's welcome Mauro, Tulia and Bjarne. Thank you all so much for being here with us today, presenting and discussing. Now I will guide you through our agenda for, our agenda for today. First, we will welcome Mauro Bossano, Lenovo's EMEA Smart Collaboration Technology Lead. Mauro has over 25 years of experience in unified communication and collaboration. With a long-time passion for technology, he's been always focused on its adoption and critical challenge for any new solution introduced in educational institutions. After that, we will hear from Tulia Orschitz, a teacher at Liceo Sim International from Italy. Tulia collaborates with Campus Store Academy, training students and teachers to the use of educational robotics inside school curriculum to enhance learning and improve teaching methodologies. She is involved in several EU projects related with the promotion of STEM subjects in learning and teaching processes, and of course, the reduction of gender gap. During last years, she's been a pilot teacher within many projects. Some of them are Ingenious, GoLab, Nature-Based Solution, and Impact EdTech, and she's our Italian Scientix Ambassador. After Tulia's presentation, we will welcome Bjarne Norgard, Audio-Video Coordinator from Denmark. Bjarne has over two decades of experience when it comes to IT support and administration. He's leading and managing audio and video adoption and implementation at Aarhus University, one of the world's leading higher education campuses. Bjarne is also a specialist in support and troubleshooting of audiovisual equipment. After Bjarne's presentation, we will also back, uh, come back to Mauro one more time to hear his closing remarks. And after that, we will have time for your questions. As I mentioned, you will be able to post questions throughout the webinar in the chat box, and we will address them later in the Q&A session. So take this opportunity and share your questions and thoughts with us in the chat. And now it's enough from me. It's time to hear from our speakers. Mauro, thank you for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, Ivana, for the introduction uh, and uh, welcome uh, to um, everybody. So let me guide you through this uh, concept of uh, hybrid learning, starting from actually the definition, because somebody preferred to call it uh, blended learning, somebody hybrid. So what is it? Uh, it's uh, when uh, uh, most of the students are attending the lesson uh, um, in person, while there is uh, a, a subset of uh, classmates uh, who attend from home or from another location. And that is uh, really a new scenario, a scenario that uh, is a real challenge for uh, uh, teachers, because uh, actually the challenge is uh, 
are that uh, it's not enough uh, to um, allow the remote students or the students from home uh, to see and hear the teacher and uh, access uh, the content of the lesson, but also to establish a relationship between uh, the students in the classroom and the students from home. Because otherwise, if uh, there is not uh, that same level of engagement, the students attending remotely will feel like a sort of second class students, a sort of penalized students, and that is uh, the, 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 the key uh, challenge for the, the teachers. Um, in the past two years, uh, we have used a lot of the technology, but everybody was attending the lesson from home. And so the devices uh, that we were using uh, were devices uh, designed for individual usage. So the camera, the microphone, the speaker was uh, were for the usage of an individual person. While now, with uh, most of the students uh, returning back uh, to the classroom, then uh, the devices uh, we have been using uh, are not uh, enough. Um, let me start uh, with some uh, interesting um, remarks that uh, we got from uh, a survey that uh, this uh, company, Rich3, um, prepared on behalf of Lenovo on 20 major worldwide university. Of course, the first remark is that uh, uh, the funding, uh, the, the budget to purchase uh, the technology, to, to get the technology, is uh, basically uh, or most of the time, the, the, the first uh, challenge. But uh, let me uh, tell you, however, that uh, these kind of systems, the systems we are going to talk uh, about today, are actually much, much cheaper comp than compared to 10, 15 years ago. So now these kind of video collaboration systems are becoming really a commodity. When uh, uh, so far in the schools, in the university, the uh, let's say teachers have been trying to, to utilize uh, technology uh, for hybrid learning, uh, the main uh, issues were related to audio. Audio is a key element. We need uh, to make sure that anybody can hear and be heard regardless of whether they are attending from home or physically in person in the classroom. Uh, the other associated to audio quality issue is about the noise. A classroom, a typical classroom is a noisy environment and so it's uh, a key requirement for the technology to have some uh, uh, mechanism to reduce and cancel uh, the environmental uh, noise. Other interesting remarks, uh, apart from the typical connectivity issues, uh, like, uh, for example, the instability of the Wi Fi network because of interference or something like that, uh, there are two interesting remarks. The first uh, is that uh, uh, actually not all the teachers were ready. Uh, to address uh, the remote students at the same level as the students in the classroom. And so uh, that is, of course, a matter of also um, making the life of teachers uh, easier. Um, and uh, the last remark is about the usage of blackboards, because um, uh, in all the uh, presentation that uh, we make about the usage of um, uh, the, the content in the classroom, we usually use the whiteboard. And there is a, a, a good reason for that, because blackboards are not easy to be seen by remote students. So they represent an additional challenge. So now, um, before uh, getting to the, the, the solution description, uh, let, um, let me uh, try to address uh, the, the, the key 
uh, question that is, uh, OK, we have been using uh, these, uh, or, or we have been talking about uh, these uh, hybrid classroom, uh, hybrid learning in the post pandemic uh, um, period. So now that uh, there are students uh, in quarantine uh, and so students uh, that have to attend uh, the lesson from home. But uh, are we talking about uh, a, a solution that is required only now and when the COVID, the pandemics will be over, there will be no need anymore? But uh, let me be uh, honest and transparent. Uh, the, the key, the trigger of these uh, uh, kind of solutions is always a critical condition. So if it is not the pandemic, there could be other uh, emergency situation where, however, the school to limit the absenteeism and still provide equal learning, learning opportunities to all the students will have to utilize these kind of uh, solutions because of um, critical situation like, for example, but they are just example, critical weather conditions or strikes uh, uh, preventing the students uh, to attend uh, in the classroom uh, or um, uh, all the support for disabilities uh, and uh, uh, also the lack of teachers. Uh, so situation that may he happen. And uh, so if uh, the, the school, uh, the, the institute uh, is uh, equipped uh, with a solution uh, for hybrid learning, the school will be able to deal with these uh, critical conditions without uh, any problem. Uh, so we are talking about, again, another example of solution for resiliency. So to empower the school, the institutes uh, to adapt uh, themselves uh, to a new set of requirements. Uh, that is uh, a key element of the Lenovo educational proposition. Um, so from a pure pedagogical perspective, so in terms of uh, the, the method, uh, the learning method, um, the driver for hybrid learning is uh, uh, not related to a new approach. So as I said, it's always uh, the uh, tech, the, the, the critical condition, the emergency that is triggering that. Nevertheless, um, the usage of these uh, new kind of technology is uh, introducing uh, interesting uh, elements like, uh, for example, uh, a new way of collaboration um, or uh, um, personalized learning because uh, there may be situations where students feel, uh, however, more confident and more engaged when attending from home. And last but not least, um, we have been talking about um, uh, how the school should prepare to the work environment. And the work environment we know is now focused on hybrid working. So the possibility to work uh, with, uh, or, or to, to create, um, let's say meetings, for example, with uh, uh, people attending also from, from home. So the usage, the usage of this uh, technology is uh, by itself uh, a preparation for what uh, the students are going to face uh, in the actual work environment. So now let's talk about what does it mean uh, to transform uh, a space like a classroom to enable hybrid learning. But um, imagine that there is a display uh, already in the in the uh, environment in the space. It could be an interactive, so a touch display, but it's not necessarily uh, a requirement. And what do we need? Uh, um, as, a, as a basic approach uh, is uh, to connect uh, the teacher's uh, devices or so the PC, the Chromebook or whatever it is uh, used by the teacher to a pair of uh, peripheral audio and video 
and specifically a camera that has a, a large field of view, basically to take a snapshot of a large space like a classroom, with some features usually related to artificial intelligence and machine learning to um, have uh, the tracking, the zooming uh, automatically. So without asking the teacher to use uh, a remote control, uh, because in general, the approach is that the technology should be hidden, should not place an additional burden on top of uh, what the teacher does, that is uh, focused on learning, on the lesson, on the content. On uh, the audio uh, side, uh, we need uh, a, a peripheral, so uh, an audio bar that is capable of uh, capturing the voice from a large space uh, like a classroom and should have also some uh, noise cancellation algorithm, uh, again, uh, usually related to artificial intelligence uh, to make uh, the, the voice or to, to cancel the environmental noise. There may be a docking station, but just to minimize the number of cables flying around, and that is um, a basic but uh, valid and good approach. It's uh, definitely affordable because uh, basically you need just the camera and the audio bar, and it's flexible because in terms of uh, the service provider, Zoom, Microsoft, Google, you can use whatever client you have on the teacher's um, device. Nevertheless, there is also a second option, an option where there is no strictly the need for uh, for the teacher to bring uh, um, his or her uh, device because in the classroom there may uh, there is already a computer it's a it's a special computer because it runs uh, uh, this kind of uh, application dedicated to this kind of uh, usage and uh, the peripherals we were talking about the camera and the audio bar are now connected to that uh, device that uh, dedicated room kit Mm, there is uh, an additional element uh, that is uh, the console, uh, basically the controller, where you have a user interface uh, that can be used uh, um, to control the experience of the lesson online. There may be the teacher's device, uh, uh, but uh, most of the time uh, that is connected to the same bridge, to the same, uh, uh, let's say, meeting, uh, where the device uh, is dedicated uh, to the classroom is connected to. We are going to see what uh, does it mean, what are the benefits uh, of that approach. Um, compared to the previous model, we have uh, definitely um, a much easier utilization. That's because uh, what the teacher has to do is uh, to simply enter the classroom, click on the join button on the console that is synchronized with the calendar of the lessons and the lesson can immediately start so without having any cable flying around the second uh, big benefit is that uh, if uh, the school has the luxury of having uh, somebody dedicated to the IT management, then uh, you have uh, a permanent infrastructure that can be monitored. Can, uh, uh, you can receive alarms, you can receive notification when there is a problem. While in the previous uh, method, uh, what we called in general, what we call uh, in general, bring your own device, you would realize there is a problem only when you try to start the lesson. And also from a security, there is a big difference, but we cannot talk about this kind of details. And also uh, some dedicated features that Microsoft, Zoom or Google have created specifically for this kind of uh, dedicated uh, kit. Um, if uh, the, the the teacher is using this kind of uh, enhanced approach and uh, the device of the teacher is connected to the same uh, 
to the same lesson online, you have uh, some ad oh, sorry, uh, you have uh, some advantages uh, that uh, that is uh, basically everybody can see anybody else. So if uh, uh, we look at uh, what uh, the teacher sees, uh, the teacher will see, of course, uh, the classroom, uh, but also the 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 faces of the students attending from home uh, in the screen of uh, his or her uh, device. In this example, by the way, there is also a pen display. That is another option to have um, the teacher uh, um, working on the content, uh, but uh, without uh, uh, facing uh, the, the wall or the display, but facing the classroom directly. So it's uh, quite interesting also from an ergonomic point of view. Uh, the classroom, the students in the classroom, of course, see the teacher, see the faces of the other students uh, and the content, of course. And also the students from home uh, can see everything, the content, uh, the teacher and the faces of the students uh, in the classroom. So it's uh, basically a setup that we see more and more used. Um, now, let me highlight uh, that, uh, however, the starting point, as I said, is a critical condition. It, it's an emergency. Uh, but when you have these kind of solutions, you can do a lot of things. Here, I'm going to describe you just uh, some examples. Uh, so the first one is, as we said, the typical scenario, hybrid classroom, most of the students in the classroom and part of the students attending from home. But there are other scenarios, for, for example, the master teacher model where you have a single teacher uh, having lessons with multiple classrooms. But we are not talking about a lecture. We are talking about a collaborative, engaging, interactive lesson. And that is a big advantage of this kind of uh, solutions. Or, for example, the guest speaker. Imagine the school is uh, uh, talking, uh, the, the, the teacher is uh, talking about a specific uh, topic. Uh, and uh, to make uh, the lesson more engaging, uh, the teacher may invite uh, remote guests uh, to provide um, uh, some insights or some interesting point of view. And that is, of course, a very powerful uh, uh, tool for in, in terms of learning uh, methods. And last but not least, the collaboration among schools. You can imagine, again, a project or a topic that may involve multiple uh, schools uh, geographically dispersed and create uh, a um, a, a, a relationship uh, with a group of students uh, even uh, far away from uh, your country or your culture. Um, so now let me, um, let's say, um, pass the, the mic uh, to uh, Tulia because we want uh, now to, to what, what I described was the theory. So now we want to hear from the field, so from the the, uh, the teachers who have been using uh, these kind of solutions uh, and understand uh, the, the the reactions. Um, so uh, Tulia, I know that um, as uh, Ivana described, uh, you are uh, very well known uh, in the the, the STEM uh, um, arena and in the scientists scientists. Uh, uh, context, uh, but uh, I know that uh, you have been uh, one uh, of the teachers uh, who started using these uh, technology um, from uh, uh, the very beginning. And so uh, we would like to hear your experience. Thank you, Mauro. So can you hear me? OK, so uh, hello to everyone uh, as uh, thank you Mauro uh, to introduce me and thank you uh, for hosting uh, and having the chance uh, to share uh, because uh, uh, as a teacher I learned a lot uh, by sharing uh, with other teachers uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, a matter of uh, sharing best experiences uh, so uh, 
what is important for a teacher, uh, so uh, I, I want to start to say that uh, uh, I had a lot of opportunities uh, uh, from the beginning, uh, from uh, uh, some uh, uh, projects uh, that uh, allowed me to work uh, together with uh, the university, the uh, companies and the school. And uh, uh, I think that uh, this is a, a must. Uh, and that's why I'm so happy to be with the STEM Alliance. Uh, uh, since uh, it was uh, the ingenious project uh, uh, where I was a pilot teacher and I learned a lot uh, from uh, uh, such uh, kind of experiences that uh, uh, other colleagues uh, tried. So I don't want to teach anything. I already do with my students. I just want to share uh, the opportunities we had uh, to, to work in, uh, in the class uh, with, the many, uh, with many technologies uh, that helped us uh, uh, in setting uh, some kind of learning environments uh, uh, in different situations uh, that uh, help uh, us uh, to uh, reach the goal uh, to attract more students uh, uh, in what we were uh, uh, in what we were doing. So, uh, as uh, Mauro said, and as everyone experienced, uh, we had a lot of challenges uh, during uh, the uh, the, pand the pandemic, uh, and uh, we are still facing those. Uh, uh, I'm a science teacher, so I teach uh, chemistry, biology, earth sciences, uh, and sometimes also educational robotics. Uh, and uh, uh, because of that, uh, uh, I believe uh, that uh, um, uh, hands-on activities are much more valuable for students. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the challenges uh, is uh, doing that uh, uh, when you have a uh, part of the students in the class uh, and some others at home. Uh, but because of that, you don't have uh, to uh, to renounce or to uh, leave, be, uh, leave behind uh, all the practical activities. So uh, you need uh, to transfer and to set uh, uh, new ideas. Uh, one uh, uh, of those uh, is uh, uh, just, uh, let's say, uh, like a maker, you try <laughs> what works be uh, better uh, than other solution and is taking a uh, a laptop uh, in the lab uh, and uh, some students uh, work uh, with uh, classmates uh, from home. Uh, on uh, the left picture, you can see uh, we, uh, we took part uh, to, the, um, to the first Lego League uh, competition that is a worldwide uh, uh, competition in robotics. Uh, and uh, the teams uh, were, uh, were uh, because of the pandemic, were not attending uh, from school altogether. Uh, so the students uh, uh, found uh, a solution that was uh, uh, calling uh, the mate uh, and just uh, sharing uh, their computer uh, with uh, the, the classmate that was uh, attending from home. Of course, there was a lot of noise. Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, quite challenging uh, for those at home uh, understanding what was happening uh, at school. But uh, uh, it was uh, something that worked uh, better than uh, being excluded uh, from uh, from taking part to uh, to those lessons and to those competition. Uh, um, the, the 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 most important thing that uh, uh, for me uh, as a teacher uh, I wanted to uh, to to achieve uh, is. Uh, uh, Many times, not only during the pandemic, but uh, uh, in uh, normal lessons uh, or when uh, I, I needed to, to go uh, uh, online, or sometimes I wanted to reinforce uh, the, the, the teaching uh, or some uh, uh, support activities, uh, I needed to combine uh, the, um, the idea that uh, working uh, online is not the same that working in class. Uh, but when uh, uh, you have to mix uh, uh, different kind of uh, solutions, uh, uh, you need also to, uh, to be flexible in uh, scheduling uh, uh, the timing, uh, in uh, finding new approaches, uh, in uh, looking for methodologies. It's not uh, uh, just about technology, but if a technology helps me, uh, I have uh, something that is done uh, and I can concentrate uh, on what I want to transfer to students. Uh, so uh, what uh, for me is important uh, in, uh, in a class uh, is the teamwork, uh, is the hands-on work, uh, 
uh, is to engage all the students uh, and to find uh, uh, good uh, uh, learning materials uh, uh, that uh, um, can be valuable and it's not uh, a waste of time. So the first thing is to engage students. Uh, um, when uh, uh, we, we learned a lot from the, the, the pandemic that uh, if students are just behind the screen, uh, they get lost uh, uh, with uh, many other problems uh, that uh, have an influence uh, on, uh, on learning. Uh, the second thing is uh, to include everyone. Uh, and we know that there are some uh, students that are more active, some others that uh, are less. And also, uh, if uh, it was a, a matter of quarantine, uh, we had uh, some students at home, some other in class. Uh, uh, those in class uh, were complaining because uh, they were just uh, facing at the screen. They couldn't uh, uh, listen properly, so they they felt excluded uh, and not those at home. Uh, so we had to find uh, new ways uh, to to interact. Uh, that uh, at the beginning was just asking them uh, to switch on their computer and uh, enter the the meet uh, or uh, we use uh, the. Uh, the, uh, we use Google or the tools uh, from Google. And so uh, we had the opportunity to make them uh, enter in the classroom, uh, the meet, uh, or to share uh, some, uh, um, share the screens. Uh, but uh, uh, it was uh, anyway, uh, not something that worked uh, always well because there was an echo and the one was speaking and the other one was closing. So it was a, a mess. Uh, so there are also some uh, uh, different learning styles uh, and I need, uh, uh, like when I'm in the class, I needed to respect uh, all of them and I needed to, um, to personalize learning. Uh, so uh, we have some tools uh, uh, within uh, different platforms. Uh, they can be uh, on Teams uh, or it can be uh, in the Google Classroom uh, or another kind of a platforms like Blackboard. Uh, but those are more um, referable to homework uh, or to exercises. Uh, what is important is to make uh, uh, them all participating. Uh, even uh, if uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, practical activities like in the lab or like when working with robots, and uh, uh, also uh, the experiences have to be valuable uh, because uh, they uh, they need uh, to uh, not just uh, to uh, to listen to some content and uh, what is uh, different from just going online is not that, is that the teacher is very boring. Like now, uh, I I'm just speaking. I don't like you uh, make you interact uh, interacting with with me, but uh, we will do later. Uh, but for students, uh, you need uh, to be quick uh, and uh, offer some opportunities to share. So uh, let's say it's very good that uh, uh, there is a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship, like uh, having uh, uh, some uh, uh, Chromebook or some uh, laptops, or, or even uh, working with the BioD, uh, even uh, a smartphone if they don't uh, have anything else, but just connect uh, on the same environment. And uh, in this way, you're sure that uh, uh, everyone is participating and everyone can uh, give, uh, uh, can not only uh, keep content, so they uh, become not just executor, but uh, they uh, achieve some skills, uh, they uh, develop competencies, uh, that is uh, what uh, we, we wanted to, to arrive. Uh, what uh, also is important for a science teacher, but I think that for every teacher, uh, is uh, uh, to empower creativity uh, because otherwise uh, we have just uh, uh, some consumers, uh, some uh, um, so uh, we don't uh, give uh, the students uh, the best opportunities uh, uh, for their future. Uh, and to do that, uh, we need also to work in team. Uh, we need to uh, to develop a collaborative learning. Uh, we need to uh, set some different groups. Uh, uh, working on different tasks and then uh, having some uh, uh, moments. Uh, and uh, speaking about the methodologies, uh, we can speak about the debate setting, or we can speak about uh, uh, just uh, um, uh, a kind of, uh, let's say, design thinking in which uh, every group uh, work on a, a single task and then uh, they share to the class or when working with the robotics, different uh, 
uh, groups uh, work uh, on uh, programming a robot and then the, the debug is common or the, uh, the sharing of, uh, uh, of results is common. Uh, so uh, also uh, in some, uh, uh, somehow it's important uh, speaking about the sustainability. And sustainability means also uh, uh, helping students uh, to, uh, to, to be in the class uh, uh, when they are at the hospital or if they uh, they go to parents uh, or uh, travel abroad or also uh, if we, you want uh, to invite someone like Mauro was uh, explaining for a crash course or just some peers from another school, another class, uh, because it's important to open uh, uh, the walls uh, of, uh, your, of our classroom in order to have uh, the best opportunities that sometime uh, uh, are quite difficult to reach uh, if you just invite people uh, uh, coming uh, to school. Uh, and also uh, a very important thing for, for teachers uh, uh, and for students, uh, most of all, is the assessment. So uh, mm, these are just a few things uh, what uh, I had in mind, but there are many others uh, that uh, we need to, uh, to set uh, uh, in a class uh, uh, in order to uh, to arrive to the best, um, uh, um, to find the best way uh, to transfer all these. Um, it happens uh, sometimes uh, uh, that uh, uh, even, uh, not only we are speaking about the quarantine uh, or speaking about the pandemic, uh, we needed to have uh, uh, different, uh, uh, different devices uh, working uh, with uh, uh, parallel tasks uh, like uh, programming and uh, presenting something uh, here, for instance, uh, we, uh, we want, uh, the students wanted to share some uh, prototypes, uh, but at the same time, uh, they wanted to share the, uh, the code uh, that was uh, done. And uh, uh, if uh, you work with the two different uh, uh, devices, uh, uh, is, uh, is a nightmare, because uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, more groups, uh, it becomes uh, uh, it takes uh, one uh, entire lesson uh, to, to do uh, all of that. Uh, uh, instead, uh, uh, we found very, very um, easy uh, to think just uh, to, uh, um, to, to the content uh, that we want to share. Uh, so the solution that uh, uh, we, we had the opportunity to, uh, to try and uh, that we loved uh, very much uh, was uh, having, uh, like uh, Mauro was describing in theory, uh, was having uh, two different uh, uh, desktop uh, monitors uh, on trolleys. Uh, so uh, very easy because uh, we, uh, we managed to move from uh, different classrooms. Uh, on, uh, uh, on one of them, uh, I had uh, some students from home uh, also uh, you, you don't see here, we had some students uh, in the lab. Uh, the, the camera that uh, uh, was uh, uh, good for those uh, at home in this uh, chance, but also uh, we didn't use uh, uh, only for the quarantine. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we used uh, in the lab uh, acquiring uh, the images uh, and in the class uh, for those uh, that uh, needed uh, to, uh, to see what was uh, going on there. Uh, also, uh, you cannot see here because the, the table was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, just behind the, uh, where I took the picture. Uh, I had uh, uh, a pen surface. As I teach uh, science, uh, sometimes in chemistry, uh, I need uh, to write down uh, some formulas uh, to some scripts uh, or just to uh, drive a map. Uh, so, uh, um, in, uh, in this case, uh, uh, we, we could have uh, the opportunity to have uh, one screen for the contents, another one for the participants, and just uh, uh, one place uh, where to write uh, and to share the contents. Uh, I had also a, a, teacher, um, desk, uh, a teacher computer uh, because uh, I wanted also uh, to control uh, the interaction from home. Uh, so usually, in other uh, in other setting of uh, of the class, uh, I need to have uh, more than uh, than uh, uh, those technologies. So also my personal uh, uh, my personal uh, uh, tablet, 
uh, and uh, it was uh, really difficult to manage everything. Uh, in, uh, in our setting, uh, all the students have uh, one uh, Chromebook uh, and also they can, uh, uh, they have a, a, a tablet surface, uh, a little tablet surface uh, where they can write uh, as well. So uh, it's a two-way communication. Uh, I can share something, but they can share at the same time uh, on, uh, uh, through the, the connection uh, on the screen. Uh, this is an example uh, of uh, a lesson I was uh, uh, speaking about uh, biology and uh, uh, I wanted uh, to, uh, to make also, uh, as I was uh, mentioning, I need, uh, the teacher needed to uh, prepare different kind of materials in order to make the students be engaged. Uh, and uh, so when uh, you don't have the opportunity to, to have all the students in the class, uh, you can use uh, some uh, uh, some tools, this is a, a free one, I put uh, the, the link here, uh, because all the students uh, can, uh, uh, can uh, not just uh, see a 2D image, uh, but also uh, move it, it, uh, it, uh, it is a 3D, uh, um, it's an applet uh, where they can work on that. So uh, it's, uh, um, let's say, a learning environment and not just a transmission uh, of, uh, of contents. Or you can also uh, ask students uh, to work uh, with uh, some interactive uh, uh, tools uh, like this one on Fed Colorado, or you can find something on GoLab. Uh, but uh, uh, in order to have uh, uh, students uh, uh, um, working on what uh, uh, is a common, uh, a common wish and a common target uh, in the class. Uh, so let's say that uh, uh, working uh, with the, so the technology helped me to concentrate uh, on what I wanted to share. And uh, uh, for students, uh, it was uh, really valuable. Uh, we, uh, we also asked them uh, if they found difficult uh, to uh, follow uh, uh, all these tools, uh, all this interaction. And they said that uh, uh, in their uh, opinion is less boring as a, uh, uh, more attractive. Uh, they don't. Uh, uh, they don't hide behind uh, uh, a closed camera like sometimes it happens. Uh, something that uh, uh, also is very good uh, is that uh, uh, through this technology, uh, we have the opportunity to have a different uh, microphones, uh, so uh, all the class uh, can interact uh, uh, with uh, the uh, also with the students at home. Uh, the audio is uh, perfect, uh, so. Uh, no one feels excluded. And uh, my students uh, found it uh, so useful that uh, uh, we don't use uh, only when we have students at home, uh, but we use also uh, when we wanted to share a prototype. Uh, so they, uh, they stay uh, in front of the camera. So we set uh, a meet uh, inside uh, uh, the same classroom with all the students in the classroom and some of them uh, just in the lab or uh, just uh, apart. Uh, they share the prototype and the prototype can go directly like a, a big screen, can go directly on, a, on the, the, the big screen. Uh, so uh, it's like having, a, a, let's say, a microscope uh, uh, going deep uh, on uh, uh, on what they wanted to um, to make more important in the lesson. Uh, so I think that uh, I spoke a lot. Uh, I could speak uh, even more, but there's uh, just a uh, <laughs> few ideas. And uh, now I give back uh, the floor to Mauro uh, uh, that will present uh, the other colleague. Uh Thanks a lot, uh, Julia. Very, very interesting. Uh, um, and so that uh, is uh, for, 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 from um, a school in uh, higher education. Let, let's have a look now at uh, what, uh, um, what's the experience at the university level. So, um, Bjarne, um, you are from the Arus University, that is one of the top uh, always in the top uh, ranking of the worldwide university uh, every year uh, and so definitely very interested we are very interested in uh, um, hearing from you your experience about uh, these kind of solutions thank you <clears throat> yes my inputs uh, start from a creator's engineer point of view 
um, we made a task force to make it to see uh, and make it possible to combine this hybrid world, hybrid teaching. Uh, so it could last as a new standard in our rooms. Um, I built our hybrid scenarios at a time when we didn't know how long COVID-19 would keep people home and the question could be, could this take years or what do we look into? So we had to think about how our university and teaching could continue anyway, uh, even if it would last for a long time. Because of the crisis situation, um, we didn't thought about the problems with the funding because it, it was a need. We had to do this because otherwise we didn't have a, a, a place to, to continue our work. Um, and that would be an even bigger catastrophe for the teaching if it couldn't last and the poor quality of the learning process would, would occur. At the start, um, the online teaching was some tryout and was done from rooms where only professors were present because of that was what the, we, we, we did have at hardware at that time and because of COVID-19 kept them home and uh, we should be aware of keeping uh, away together from each other. Um, but we early, as you mentioned too, uh, were, became aware of very early that hybrid teaching would keep uh, the students more active because they couldn't hide be, uh, behind a closed camera. They have to uh, interact in this in this classroom. And that's uh, that's an important part of hybrid classroom at all. Um, uh, later on, the, uh, we, we graduated and moved on teaching session where someone was sitting in the room and someone was at home. We, we can call that a real hybrid indeed, where someone was present and someone was away. So, um, so we built this, um, we started to mass product this uh, hybrid rooms on a Lenovo platform and uh, been super happy about that. Uh, we have about 60 of them running now, so we got some experience, uh, but it's not a technology that we should focus on today. So I would mention some of the scenarios uh, we have tried and which have grown out of this, because now it's not only the, the crisis situation, now it's afterwards and, and uh, like, life finds a way the teachers and the professors find some other use cases for this and this is very interesting i think interesting um of course they're still used in the similar situations like the one they're built for under the crisis uh, namely when you mix uh, a teach of people uh, on a distance we got some some courses uh, some some lines of education uh, which uh, you can join from our country, uh, even uh, 400 kilometers away. So you can join this classroom and be in the classroom. That's hybrid in a, in a new case without any crisis and a COVID uh, in mind. Um, we, see, uh, we also see a, a second uh, new use case where a lot of teachers start to mix some rooms um, they, they invite another room, a whole classroom in, discuss things and make breakout rooms. So, so, um, so several of our hybrid rooms mix this together now. Uh, I think this, this, was, uh, this scenario happens when too many students have been booked for a room. Um, so you can make the room bigger by combining some, some, uh, some hybrid rooms. That's, that's very nice for the, for, for the facility management too, they could uh, in in a in a in a quick thing make the room bigger. So 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 we have to look into that we can make uh, we, we can easily make room bigger and smaller by adding uh, rooms and um, that's nice too. Um, in some very large teaching rooms, we we have been seeing. Every, I think everyone has seen this problem when you got a projector or a screen you have to sit in a close distance to see what is on the screen. So if you got one of the, the places in the back of the room, you, you need a very good eyes or you need a very big screen to see what's on it. And um, I've seen a lot of uh, teachers use the hybrid scenario for that. So they start this meeting, zoom in on the content on the whiteboard and, and then everyone can see it on the laptop and, and still 
be physical in the in the room so um so you you have a nice effect of that too that's not what they're built for but that's a, a secondary payoff um so you can see the board content displayed uh, from the camera and still be in the session um realities has been shown that the the creativity is unstoppable and many have starting play with the system so even new ideas are dropping in. They come and ask, "Oh, can we have a secondary camera? Then we can we can have a we can have a, a, a focus on some electronics we have to have to fix. So we can zoom in on the electronic and shift cameras." At the start, uh, there was all those presets. You can make a preset of the screen, a preset of the room, and they they didn't want to use that at the start. But now I think the, they're starting more and more and mix it and put extra cameras in and um, even though our platform from Lenovo, the Lenovo Hub is very ad adaptable for that, for you can just plug in another USB camera, and uh, and that makes it even more combinable and flexible. <clears throat> so so um, the creative has been unstoppable, and this way um, um, alternative use constantly showing up, and um, then it's our job as the engineers, the the, the backbone of the project to to adapt all those use cases and support them as much as we can and make uh, make the number of the room growing because one of the the problem is if you make your your um, your teaching material ready you're teaching uh, for a hybrid room and you and you are granted a room without out a hybrid setup you have to go back and make your your stuff old fashioned and that's a problem because if one of the teacher has has uh, has uh, trusted in our hybrid room and you got one of the old room, they could they could go back and that would stop the process. So um, so one of my conclusions is that that uh, we have to to uh, make it grow. I got a lot. I got 400 rooms and uh, only six hybrid uh, 60 hybrids of them yet. I don't know if uh, we 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 come through with making them all hybrid. It's about economic too, but um, even though the the, the crisis, the, the pandemic, um, of course, this has, this has been a, a worldwide catastrophe, but it has always been a very great eye opener for a way to legitimize uh, audiovisual tools and hybrid rooms in in, uh, in the, the educational world. And I think um, I'm glad to see all the the, the most the, the main part of the. the the professors and the educators are, 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 are welcome this very much and for us. So, so I think it's uh, it's 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 not just a, a pop up. It, it has come to stay, as uh, as I see it. And thanks, uh, thanks a lot, um, Bjarne. Very very interesting, uh, and also. Uh, thanks a lot for describing new potential uh, use cases. So the technology or the solution is not limited to the typical standard uh, uh, scenario. So very, very good. L let me um, simply uh, before uh, passing the floor back uh, to Ivana, um, invite you to have a look at uh, those uh, two page pages in our Lenovo Tech Today, that is uh, our blog to describe uh, the usage of uh, uh, the technology, uh, specifically in this case about a hybrid classroom, so within uh, the education. You will find uh, uh, case studies, uh, you will find uh, also recordings of uh, webinars, uh, a lo lots of information about uh, how the technology can be used in um, starting from uh, real experience as we uh, have been doing today uh, from from the field. Um, so Ivana, back to you. I've seen uh, that uh, there are some questions, so let's exactly. try to address them. Exactly. Um, before going to the Q&A session, I just want to thank you all for a really interesting uh, presentation. Thanks for sharing your view on this topic. And it was really great to hear about various solutions for the hybrid classroom settings. Uh, before starting the Q&A session, I would just remind our audience to fill in the participation list to validate that you attended this webinar. And now let's go to questions. So um, I believe it's Fronia from Greece asked the question about GDPR. So 
what about privacy and data protection that can arise when live online audio or visual sessions or lessons are used as part of a school's remote education program? Who would like to answer the question? I could give uh, our point of view. Great, uh, go ahead. Because we saw that early coming, so so we had to 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 join it to make all the students join this this world, and so we have made it a a demand that they have to sign that it's okay that we use it for educational use, and um, and of course it's in a it's a it's a close uh, environment. It's in the university environment. We use this, so it. We don't post it on the internet and kind of things. It's, you have to take a course to to get the the recordings. So when you when you join our university, you have to sign. It's okay for me. Okay, thanks a lot for sharing your view, Bjarne. Uh, we also got a question from Ella Rakovac Bekesh, who says actually it's more of a comment, but uh, really raises a really good question. So her comment is that she thinks that lack of social interaction is one of the biggest issues in the hybrid remote teaching environment. So what do you th think about that? How is the hybrid classroom influencing social skills of the students? So, Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, so I wanted to answer because uh, this is something that all uh, the high school teacher and the, the middle school and the primary school teachers experienced. Uh, so I would say that uh, you need to find different ways, not just uh, uh, move uh, from the class uh, to online uh, and uh, having uh, just one way uh, lessons, uh, but interact. Uh, one experience we had, uh, for instance, uh, was, uh, and is related to what, what uh, Bjorn uh, shared, uh, we had uh, some robots uh, uh, in one place uh, and students uh, uh, wanted to program the robot. They did uh, uh, through, uh, so in a, an hybrid uh, scenario. And it was a very challenging. All the students took part, uh, and they uh, needed also to think uh, to a different uh, uh, referral system because uh, to uh, to move the robots uh, in a different place, they needed to know what was fo uh, going forward, what backward. So uh, in this way, uh, you challenge all the students uh, to interact uh, between them. Otherwise, they just uh, uh, stay and uh, hide behind the screen. This is just a, one experience, but one idea. Uh, to to do differently. It's a very good tip. Thanks for sharing okay. it. I can uh, put some extra on that because I, I agree completely with that. You have to to make the, it in, interactive and bring them in. And and some I heard some of the professors say that it's very important for them that they keep the the camera on. Uh, so if you disable your camera, you have you have uh, chosen to go out of the room because that's the same if you leave the room. So. So the interactivity comes both way and uh, make a question for make questions for them in the sky too, not only them in the room. So it, it demands that you include them to keep them active. Exactly. I, so that, yeah. Uh, so, sorry, Ivan. Uh, I forget. Uh, is very important uh, for teachers uh, uh, to check also the the. the level of stress of students, especially when we have a lot of students at home. There are simple tools like a peer deck, uh, uh, but uh, it's important at the beginning of the lesson, uh, not just to focus uh, uh, on the contents, uh, but also on the emotional uh, uh, interaction with students like you do in the class and you uh, is very important. Thanks a lot. Uh, we are running out of time, but let's quickly just uh, focus on one question that was actually mentioned by Paul and Sofroni as well. It is regarding the connectivity issues. So is there some speed of the network that is um, like a minimal recommended speed for schools? And also, would you also uh, suggest that every school should have a IT specialist who would maybe help with the te help teachers with the equipment because they might not all be uh, really prepare to uh, repair hardware? Uh, uh, good question. Uh, and uh, let's say in terms of uh, bandwidth, uh, the recommendation is to use, the, uh, to use a wired connection uh, if possible, because Wi-Fi is subject to interference. But there may be, however, 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi network that are stable. And so in that case, it can be they can be used. In terms of bandwidth, usually you have to consider that uh, two megabit per second is required for a single connection, so, so for a single device. 
Um, and the other question was about, oh, sorry, <laughs> the, the... About the uh, IT the specialist. Ah, yes. the IT there specialist. A support service? Uh, 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 let's say, uh, what I can say is that uh, now the systems uh, that um, we, uh, as Lenovo or Microsoft, Zoom or Google, uh, provide to manage uh, this kind of equipment uh, are very straightforward uh, and simple to use. So there is no need to have any special uh, skill to manage uh, or, or to, to, to monitor the status of your environment. So I would say probably there is no need to have somebody focused on IT, but somebody willing to take that uh, role and um, let's say contribute uh, with very little effort uh, on the monitoring of the infrastructure. Great, thanks for sharing. So, I can supply uh, that you should do that. That it's it's important to have some tech guys to set a standard, and it's support. Uh, it's uh, important to have some tech guys to make the rooms uh, check up at them. Lenovo provides very nice cabling in one cable, so you can unplug it. So that kind of things. Uh, so no one has compromised the setup. Otherwise, it's totally right. What Morris said. Great, thanks. Thanks, Bjarne. Thanks, Mauro. And thanks, Tulia. Thank you very much for joining us today. And um, I just want to say thank you all also for our audience who was uh, giving really, really good questions for us. And um, see you next time. Have a great evening. Thanks Bye. a lot. Goodbye, thank everybody. Bye. Bye.